as you're repeating this, I admire, 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 and you're seeing it, I admire in everyone. It opens you up. It's a beautiful little practice. So these are all ways that you can, these are all ingredients of love that you can do japa with and practice opening and opening and opening. Another aspect of love is appreciation. When you're in love, you appreciate people. And that's why that thank you is really good. Or you can use the phrase, you know, I appreciate, whichever feels more resonant for you. And another ingredient for love is um, being proud. The universe is so proud of all of us. The source within you is so proud of who you are. And being proud is really a big part of love. You, if you want to love yourself, you want to really be proud of yourself. And you see it in little kids, you see it in dogs. Little kids are like, mommy, mommy, look at me, look at me. That's because they know that feeling. They're proud of themselves. They feel proud of themselves and they want to feel their mom being proud of themselves, proud of them. And it's because it's natural. It's part of love. We're born with this feeling of being proud of ourselves. And the more you can practice being proud, feeling proud, the more you're allowing in this love, this divine and unconditional love. Another aspect of unconditional love is that it's really light. It doesn't have any heaviness. It's super, super light. And it's easy. So you can feel that lightness and you can just kind of move your attention gently through your body and just open up any area that feels less than light and just bring the light in through you. It's a very, um, like feeling yourself being light, feeling yourself being lighter and enlightened. The lighter you are, the more enlightened you feel. And, um, and so when you practice these different aspects of love, they're all, they're all ingredients of love. When you practice them, it deepens your experience of love. It enriches you. It heals your body. So one of the best things you can do is do this kind of japa with yourself, starting with yourself if you can, where you're saying thank you to every cell of your body for a day, or a week, or a month, until your body feels so full of thankfulness that you can feel how your cells are thanking you. When you're thanking your cells, your cells, when they trust it, relax, and they start doing their job the way they want to do the job, the way they're meant to do the job. And so as you're thanking your cells, as you get good at it, and you practice at it, and you get more consistent at it, now your cells, you'll feel this overwhelming appreciation from your body. Where your body is loving you. Where your body is thanking you. It's really sweet. And then you can practice doing that japa with yourself on approving of yourself. And it's really great to approve of the areas where you have pain or where you have <coughs> discomfort. Because as you approve of that area, or if you've ever had any kind of shame or anything like that, as you approve of it, it literally alchemizes it. It transforms it. It shifts it. And so your body, as you start feeling all this approval in your body, what will happen is everybody in your life will start to approve of you. People treat us the way we think about ourselves. They don't... You're, the way you think about yourself is how the world responds to you. And I had such great evidence of this. I was, I was feeling like I was a goddess. I thought, I am a goddess. And I just started thinking I was a goddess. And I thought it for three days. And I was really feeling I'm a goddess. And then I was inspired to go for a walk. 
and I was inspired to wear this cute dress, and I was, then I was inspired to go into a restaurant, and before I went in the restaurant, I said, you know, I'm not hungry, it was like four in the afternoon. I'm like, I'm not hungry, I was like, go in the restaurant. Okay, so I <laughs> go in the restaurant, and then I was inspired to sit in this one spot, and I ended up talking to this woman, it was a community table, and she and I started talking, and she was there with two other people, but they were engaged, and so she and I started talking, and she looks at me and she says, you're exuding so much love and joy. She said, I do goddess portraits. Do you want to be one of my goddesses? And I said, yes. <laughs> and then she wrote about it in the Huffington Post. And then one of the producers of the Huffington Post said, do you want to be on a video show? And so then we were on Huff Post Live. And, and then I just shot another goddess with her. And so it's like, it's just like it flows, you know. And it was literally because I was saying that to myself. So you want to be aware of what you're saying to yourself, and you want to say to yourself the things that you would like to be hearing. So you can practice um, with this feeling of approval, and as you do that, you can also feel how you are approving of other people, and how other people are naturally approving of you. And then you can practice with this feeling of admiration, and as you admire your body, that is a really powerful energy. That's a really powerful feeling. It is an ingredient of love, but it's like love amped up. Because admiration towards your body, it opens your body up. It opens your body up to more pleasure, to more joy, to more capacity, to more health. Your cells love to be admired. Your cells love to be admired. That's the best nourishment or one of the best nourishments you can give your body. And then as you do that, and you do that for a day, or a week, or a month, or a year, until you feel drenched in admiration for yourself, your cells will start to admire you, and you'll feel this rapturous harmony with yourself. And you'll feel in harmony with everyone, and you'll know that everybody around you is admirable, that you can admire everyone. And as you do that, then you'll feel everyone else outside of you admiring you. And it becomes richer and richer and sweeter and sweeter. And then when you feel proud of every cell of your body, that's when you get this orgasmic bliss. <laughs> and that's when you're, you're driving and you're like on the verge of, it's just pleasurable. Um, it's really crazy good. And this, this feeling of being proud of your body and being proud of every particle of your body, going through every inch of your body and thinking, you know, I'm proud of you, 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 and feeling it in every part of your body. That again is optimizing your body into more pleasure, more health, more youthfulness, more vibrancy. I went from having narcolepsy where I fell asleep 20 times a day to now having so much energy that people half my age say to me, how do you have so much energy? And it's natural because I'm not wasting my energy with thoughts that are irrelevant. All of my thoughts lift me up and lighten me. All of my thoughts are relevant. All of my thoughts are in alignment with the source within me. And if I have a negative thought, the trick is to be kind, really kind with myself, kind with yourself, and just say, oh, you're so sweet. Aren't you cute having a negative thought? You're so adorable. You're so adorable. And then as you do that, with that kindness, it shifts the thought, and now you're back into this place of love. Mm -hmm. Love is, like, if you're down here and you're thinking, I need money, love is the same as abundance. If you're down here and you think, oh, I'm sick, love is the cure. If you want to be with the genius idea, Love is where the genius idea flows in. If you want to be in the right place at the right time, be in a place of love, and you will be guided there. The universe loves you. The source within you adores you. There's nothing you can ever do. There's nothing you can ever do that the source within you would think is wrong or bad. Everything that you live is valuable. Everything that you do is valuable. And when you get that, it's easier to allow in this love. This is the kindest, sweetest, most gentle, most loving, most beautiful universe in the world. This is 
a magical world. Another aspect of love is ease. If you're struggling at all, it means you're not loving. And so just relax. It's this thing about being chill. It's this thing about relaxing. And when you feel this ease, you can do the same thing with your body about allowing this ease into your body so that there's no tension anywhere. You're just letting yourself be. And love is really easy. I want to talk about service because service is something that a lot of people talk about. When you're in real service, it's always lifting you up and lightening you. If you're really being of service, it feels great. If you're being of service and it's struggle or pain, it simply means you've let yourself drop into an irrelevant place and you're perceiving the person or the situation in a way that's not serving you. So when you see that, so when you're doing service, service, and service can be really simple. Just being happy, just you being alone in your house and being happy, you are serving the entire world. Just feeling good is a service. And then if you have greater desires to serve and to benefit people, then you will be led to be doing other things as well. But just feeling good, you know, in your car, on your own, or in your house by yourself, or out on a mountaintop by yourself, you are benefiting the world. And that's really every service, if it comes from this place of love, it will be easy, it will be fun, it will be effortless, it will feel really good. You'll feel good before it starts, you'll feel good while you're, while you're doing it, and you'll feel good after. And it will serve you. Real service always serves you. Real service always gives you as much or more than what you provide for the rest of whoever you're serving. So, um, so that's cool. So if you're if you're serving ever and you're feeling you know tired or stressed, just that's when you want to do something to take care of yourself. That's when you want to do something to bring yourself into feeling good, which is either like take a nap, take a bath. Uh, masturbate, you know, do anything that feels good and brings you back and, you know, or go running really fast or dancing or hiking or something like that. And then when you get back into this love place, you'll be able to approach whatever that service is in a gentle, easy way, and you'll be more intuitive. When you're in this place of love, you're intuitive. Your heart is open, so you're perceiving the inspirations from the source within you, and you're guided before there's any evidence. So you'll have the capacity, at least this is what my capacity has been, and the way I got to it was literally just by practicing, appreciating everything and loving. It's now, I can, I can tune to anyone in the world, anywhere, living or non-physical, and I can feel where they really are. Not what they're saying, not how they're behaving, but how the source within them really is. And the source within them is always in a place of love. But I might feel, I might, like, when I'm tuning to this one person, I can feel, oh, the energy, there's a total positive momentum, there's an opening, there's a total positive momentum, and I can feel laughter and fun and freedom. And what I'm doing is I'm using my heart to feel into what this person that I've connected with, that I want to tune to, feeling into where that person is. And when, when I do that, what I'm doing is I'm actually tuning to the real truth because when you're, hold on, I get your water. This is my love bottle, it says love, and it says think it when you drink it. <laughs> it's from h 2 o So, using your heart, when your heart is soft and open, you can ask, let me have the perspective of the source within whoever it is that you want to have that perspective of. And so you can tune to the real truth of someone. 
So even if someone is struggling or someone's sick or something like that, you can tune to the source within them. And as you do that, you then put yourself in a way to be able to perceive that energy. And that's a way to get... That's a way to get more unconditional. Because if you take your cues of how you're going to feel from your source within you or from the, the source that's within somebody else, you are then um, independent of the condition that the person is in or, that the, or the condition that you're in. If you happen to be sick, the thing to know is you can tune to who you really are and you'll feel your well-being. You'll feel the energy of who you really are and the perspective will be energizing. And if you stay in that long enough, you won't be able to be sick very long because that energy is restorative and healing. And if you're approving of your sickness, it will really go away fast. And if you're proud of your sickness, it will really go away fast. It's amazing. But here's one of the tricks about the universe. If you do, if you feel good to get rich, it won't work. But if you feel good because it feels good, you'll get rich. If you feel good to make someone love you, it won't work. But if you feel good because it feels good, people will love you. So you can't do anything with an agenda. This universe doesn't take agendas. It, when you have an agenda, you're telling the universe that whatever it is that you want is not here. So the universe is bringing you more of what, is, what you don't want, bringing you not hereness of that. And so when you take out the agenda and you just do things because this feels really good, I'm going to go do this because I like doing that. I'm going to feel this because it feels really good. I'm going to approve of this person because it feels good to approve of them. It always feels good to do something that is in this place of love. And so every time you're doing something like that, you, if you do it just to feel good and you don't attach it to the goal, then the universe will bring in all the goals. Because the universe knows what you want. You don't have to tell the universe over and over again what you want. It knows it in the moment you have that desire. And so if you're just focused on feeling good, you're just naturally going to be led. And as you're led, you'll be drawn to busy with all the things that you like, and it becomes easy and fun. The other thing that's when you're in a place of love is a lot of things that, that like when I was showing this thing where the new, new neurons are growing, it was like a time lapse of somebody's brain. When these new neurons are growing, these other things will just disappear. <laughs> yes. Come back. <laughs> and as they start to disappear, if you just keep staying in a place of your heart being open and appreciating things and practicing japa or practicing writing out what you appreciate, and you keep practicing this, what will happen is you things that bothered you will simply go away. I, I said how all the food allergies, they just literally went away. I just stopped feeling bad before I ate and I started feeling good before I ate and then my body was able to process everything. And then I stopped perceiving people in a negative way and all my relationships became harmonious. And it really becomes, um, it's really great for paying attention to where you're receiving what you want. And when you're receiving what you want, you know you're doing it in the right way. And another thing is how you feel. So basically, as you just keep practicing feeling good, things that you don't want will literally just slip away. It's amazing. If you have somebody in your life that's not quite right for you, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to break up with them. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is be in a place of love, admire them and appreciate them either they will just, if they feel good and they want to come up to that place, they'll be admirable and appreciative. If they don't, they'll simply vibrate out of your life until the time is that right for them to come back in when they're in a happy place, if ever. So it's never, you never have to do anything. You never have to quit a job or, or do anything, really. All you have to do is just be in this happy place, and the job will quit you. And then, you know, you don't have to do it. So that's why love is so easy, because it's really about relaxing into it, keeping your heart soft and open. This feeling of being soft is really key. I have no idea what time it is. Does anybody know? 
Yeah. Awesome. I'm supposed to end in five minutes. Like, how cool is that? Because I wanted a five minute warning, but I forgot to ask for that. <laughs> but you did ask for that. But I did ask for that. I forgot to ask for it for, to a human, but I asked him for it in my mind. Perfect. So, um, yeah, so things will just literally fall away that are not right for you. And the things that are right for you will literally start to just materialize. So does anybody have any questions or anything that you want to say? Max does. Anything? Thank you. Yes, thank, yeah. you. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. My we absolute know. pleasure. It's <laughs> very inspiring talk. Thank you. Tell us your name again, please. Karen Laurie, L-O-R-R-E. Laurie. Thank you, Karen. Yes, nice to meet you. <laughs> can is there anywhere we can find you other than YouTube that we will be on, um, like books or? Um, I'm on video? Facebook as Karen Laurie K A R E N L O R R E. I have a yummymeditations.com as okay. my website. I create personalized guided meditations for people, Beautiful. and we're creating apps so that um, meditation apps so that you can have uh, really good feeling meditations to listen to that make your body sing and yeah, feel good. Um, so yummy meditations plural dot com. Yummy meditations dot com. Um, Karen Laurie, Karen Laurie have a page on Facebook. I think I'm on Instagram but I hardly ever go there and I'm on Twitter but I hardly ever go there but I'm there. And um, <laughs> YouTube, I'm all over YouTube. Awesome. Um, yeah, I I also based on that goddess thing I'm in a documentary that's still being shot but it's called A Thousand Goddesses and it's about unconditional love. So there's a couple of sneak peeks on YouTube about that. Um, and that's by the master artist to the Dalai Lama who's creating that documentary, so it's fun. Um, yeah, is there anything else? Anybody has a, any questions about it? I'm, I'm, I'm just, first of all, I want to thank you. This is so inspiring. Um, and I was wondering if you ever had these kind of uh, workshops with no speaking at all, just like being present and just experiencing so he asked if I ever had done workshops where I don't speak, but I'm just present in being. Um, I haven't done workshops like that, but I do that with people, individual people. And sometimes we just sit and stare for like hours, we don't say a thing. And I can feel the energy of the source within me leaping out my eyes to people. Yeah, it's the most delicious feeling, yes. I do that with my refrigerator too. <laughs> <laughs> and nature does workshops like that 24 7. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, just one quick thing when you were saying about nature. I live on a dirt road in Los Angeles, which is really rare. Um, and I was getting my mail, it's like about a, an eighth of a mile from my house. And um, I got out of my car and I got my mail. And then when I turned around to go in the car, there was a skunk. And I was in this place of total love. So I just said, the skunk came out of, um, out of the bushes at the same time that I turned around. And the skunk saw me and its tail went up. And I said, hello, you beautiful skunk. And I really felt how beautiful the skunk was. She was beautiful. And her tail went right down. And I got in the car. And I drive really slow because it's a dirt road. And, um, and a cliff on the side. And... Um, I look in the rear, or the side mirror, and the skunk is running alongside my car. And um, when I park my car, I get out, and the skunk is right there, and we did that. <laughs> I did it with a moose in my camp too, where I was hiking, and it was, um, and it was sunset, and there was a moose on a, um, there was a moose on a hill. And it was beckoning me to go up there and look at it. So I walked up to where this moose was. And the moose and I just communed with each other. And I put my hand on his, um, his thing. And we just beamed love. For, I mean, it felt like we'd known each other forever. It felt like we had this total understanding of each other forever. We knew each other really well. It was the most beautiful experience. And, yeah. That's really yeah. amazing. Wow. Yeah, when you're in a place of love, wow. this is nice. 
Moose apparently, moose apparently can be very dangerous, but yeah, so I, not, I was thinking, yeah, not when you're in a place of love, though. Moose, that, yeah, the moose wants to play. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate you all. Yeah.